Tell me a story, Joe. <laughs> hacking your cousin's phone. Yes. And I put hacking in quotes because it was definitely not actually hacking, more of social engineering. But uh, one of my early cell phones that I had, not the first cell phone I had, but um, it, I have never seen a Bluetooth interface the the same way it gave ridiculous amounts of control so it could request to bluetooth connect to other phones and so i i was just sitting there at my cousin's house and it i just went ahead to see what would happen i clicked to she had her bluetooth turned on and i sent a request to connect to her phone uh and I, I don't know what she thought the request was. It was just, it, it shows up because I've seen it on other people's phones. It shows up as just a generic Bluetooth device wants to connect. Do you like, do you accept? Like, will you let it connect type of thing? And so I connected to her, her cell phone and it, my phone. And this is, this, is, this is before smartphones were really a thing. Like the, the first iPhone might, might've been out, but like, this this is uh, just a normal. I, it wasn't even a flip phone. It was like a slide phone to get the um, to the the keyboard on it, and so it. But it it granted me access to her entire file structure, and I could download any of the files that I wanted from her phone to my phone, uh, whether it be embarrassing pictures or whatever. Yo, you be careful there. And and so. Um, and, she she didn't have any embarrassing pictures on there, but I I I ripped a couple of the the photos off of there, and I'm like, hey, do you like this photo? And she was like, what? Huh? I'm like, don't accept random Bluetooth requests. <laughs> um, yeah, I I I, I did it. Uh, a couple of different times in lectures at college to see if anyone would randomly accept. No one did, which is good, but yeah. yeah wow. don't, what don't did you be... go to school for? Not where, but what? Computer science was my major. But not specifically, not, I'm sure it covers some cybersecurity, but not it, like, it does. Team. But where I tried it yeah. was in my generals classes. I didn't oh, try I was about it. To in, say, yeah. Depends yeah. on where you tried it. They better not. <laughs> Yeah, no. Instantly, um, you're like, Peach, they all fail. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, there were a couple of times when on the campus Wi-Fi, I, I had a Mac at the time, and I could look at the network-connected stuff, and you can, on a Mac, you can set stuff as publicly accessible files. And so there were a couple of times where you don't, if you set it as publicly accessible, it, they don't have to accept a request you are connected to, you're on the same same internet so there were a couple of times where i could see other people's files that they had as left a, yeah, they as publicly yep. yep uh and so there were a couple of times where i was like oh this is a whole bunch of music i like that song i like that song and so i just i grabbed <laughs> grabbed their files and copied them over to my my computer because they left it it open so yeah uh, basically <laughs> the moral of the story is don't don't, don't be Joe's cousin. <laughs> don't yeah. Well, I mean, uh, don't don't connect. Don't establish random connections, and make sure you know your privacy settings if you are on a publicly accessible internet connection. I still to this day. I mean, within the last couple of weeks, uh, I am surprised by people who have their AirDrop open. You know, from Apple. Oh yeah, just leave um, it open. Because that's how I transfer files to my computer, and uh, uh, I I have it connected, and I have it set to, you know, whatever friends only or, or connection, whatever. And and the newest iPhone stuff, iOS is, I, I don't know if there's a way around it, I guess, but the newest iOS devices will say like if I say from anybody, it'll be for like the next ten minutes, and it automatically shuts off. I don't remember if I set that up that way or if it's default. But it just blows my mind to go start. I'll be in a public place and start to share to from my phone to my Mac. And before my Mac pops up, there'll be three other ki- people around me. I almost said kids because random kid popped up. But there'll be three other people around me that says I can drop photos and files to them. I'm like, 
That's how people get in trouble. Yep. Uh, as says, Apple shut down airdrops and parts of H or China, China, because oh, China. people were using it to spread anti-government pamphlets. Yeah, uh, I'm sure the Chinese government made them shut that down. But you also have the issues where you talk about the random pictures that are being sent to people. I am getting all froggy again. Skippity dippity. I don't know what's <laughs> going on here. Uh, we're going to keep powering through. So well, it's, it's almost there now. Uh, but yeah, Joe, what's the weirdest? What's the weirdest thing that somebody's tried to randomly? It, it didn't have to be like airdrop, but you know, also, I don't mean scams, but something showed up in your text messages or your email or a Bluetooth request, your phone. What's one of the random moments that that's happened? I, I mean, the things that I think of are, are usually scams. Like, um, most of the reason why I put my Facebook account to where only friends of friends can uh, send me requests is because a bunch of scam accounts of scantily sure. clad women are like, I want to be your friend. I'm like, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Uh, 30-year-old virgin man down in your parents' basement, I do not want to be your friend. Uh, it's, that's such a stereotype, man. It is not I a 30-year-old mean, virgin. It is somebody in Nigeria trying to get married. <laughs> okay? yeah. Stop stereotyping, uh, Hey, hey, but at least the, those people are royalty. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Uh, it's oh. true. But yeah, yeah. Uh, or, I, I mean, know. these aren't necessarily scams, but all the different people, especially in the last year and a half, cold calling or cold texting and being like, hey, you want to sell your house? I'm like, no, I do not. Oh, uh, yeah. No, especially in, in this that. economy? No. I bought at the right time. My my uh, percentage is quite low, especially compared to today's percentages. I could not... if If I was to sell this house, I could not turn around and afford to buy it because... It would be it would be worth too much compared to what I paid for it. So, no, I, do you get the ones? Now we're going to digress into scams a little bit. Do you get the ones where it's the wrong address, the wrong name of the person? Like you're not that name. Like for me personally, it's been, hey Wendy, your house at six eight two Cherry <laughs> Street. I saw it's for sale, and I'd love to talk to you. But you know, it's that oh, I sent the wrong message. You get those? Mm -hmm. uh, no, usually they have my name and my actual address right. when they sent it to me. Hey, Joseph, and I'm like, yeah. Now, it if might you start not be off a scam, scam, it might be. No, I, I think a, the market. But yeah, still, I think so a lot solicited. of them are are. Le I think a lot of them are legitimately trying to purchase. Um, at least I assume so, but and, and I've had a couple of them where I've responded to them or in the call uh, where they've been like, "So you want to sell your house?" I'm like, "Sure, if you're willing to pay four times more than what the actual value yeah. of it is." They're like, uh, one person even went as far as like, "What have you done to make it worth that much?" Nothing. I've done yeah. nothing. If you want it, that's what it would take me to get out of it because, frankly, I don't want to leave. So I'm not saying that there isn't a price. I wouldn't be uh, there. There's there's a price, but there's always you, a price. You're not willing to pay it, and that's what I'm. That's what I convey yeah. to them. That, I don't. I don't usually do that, but I've done that a handful of times where I'm like, sure, <laughs> give me a million dollars and I'll get out of this house. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've I've gone so far as to be like, thank God, I we just killed Wendy. Can you send over a cleaning crew? <laughs> uh, because here's the thing for the last 10 plus years i haven't owned a house it's not been my house to sell but i'm getting them now a little bit of knowledge on your part will go a long way to avoid scams and then what i want to talk about happened to me today like it popped up on my text message i am happening to be expecting a package coming from usps or via usps united united states post office postal service um Today, it's and today I get a random USPS text, which they yeah. do not text. USPS, yeah. Um, like FedEx, anytime I track, you have I have to go in because I don't set up the account this way. I have to go in and say yes, I want text alerts, so I know exactly when FedEx will be texting me, and it's something expected, and I know what the messages look like. So you need to know kind of the basics, but you need to know. What a foreign phone number looks like in the United States. Mm. We're used to doing it. I'm going to use like the Hollywood version of fives, right? We're used to seeing the 
two the two sets of three and then a set of four like five 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 right you know one two three four so you're that's that's what we're, but in reality for the global scale is plus one five 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 one two three four five six seven okay and because the united states code is, is number one, one. Because we invented you know, people, <laughs> we invented the codes. I mean, well, we we know we invented the phone. So, uh, you know, Alexander Graham Bell. Unless history's lied to me, which is is possible. Anyway, that's not what we're talking about. You need to know everything else looks different, and when it when you have a plus one, and you're in the United, even a plus one, if you're in the United States, nothing will ever look like that. It will be the three, three, four. It won't even be the one, three. You know, three numbers, three numbers, four numbers. It will be just that. So it was a plus and I don't know, one seven, and then that number is like message from USPS. Your package is on the way, but it has incomplete data. Da, 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 click this link. And I'm like, that's not even an American phone number. That's not <laughs> even a United States phone. Just a little by realizing that moment. This is your dad moment of the day, brought to you by T Mobile. If you need a little pink in your life, <laughs> like all dads do, T Mobile.com. <laughs> <laughs> but no the, the dad <laughs> advice of the day is educate your here's one little fact the phone system is global and every country has a country code and other countries some do some don't not every country follows the three numbers three numbers four numbers format so anything that doesn't look right to you google it separately do not click links do not yeah a little bit of skepticism goes a long way absolutely random kid and then never click a link in that text message not ever just delete it and if you're really good well but charles you had a good packet yeah okay you know what else happens my local post office has the ability to send me emails and saying hey here's what's coming to you today and i happen to have or that email in my my email or there's a tracking number that's in your confirmation email there don't click that link go to the actual website put it in yeah. yourself and put in the tracking information and say oh i guess there's no issues <laughs> I, or, it's rare that they that they ever reach out to you beyond oh yeah uh, beyond beyond a, a note saying hey yeah. we we needed your signature on this because this is certified mail we came we will stop back at the, like they put a, a little post-it on your door to let you know that they, st they stopped there. And even that's a scam, but it's the other way. Half the time, and yeah, this they, is with multiple videos, they won't even ring the doorbell. They just run up and stick a sticker on your door and run away. I've seen, Why would you do that? You were here. Why would you? I actually saw Job a TikTok. Security. <laughs> I saw a TikTok of two people together at one time coming out to this house to prove that nobody's home. And it's caught on the ring camera, and I can't get close to my camera to do it. But you can see on the camera, the guy's fingers hovering away from the button and the, he's, the guy's telling him to move this way move that. so it, it, they're taking a picture to look like he's actively hitting the button but the ring footage is what you're seeing on my camera right now is obviously i'm not ending anything <laughs> not touching it but yeah. that's neither here nor there the other thing to do with that kind of hey your package blah 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 wait wait for a day if it's time sensitive one you should know everything joe talked about tracking numbers Amazon, you can go right into your, just log into your account normally. You could track it from there. It'll link out to where it shipped it, all that stuff. But, but just wait. If tomorrow, if today my package hadn't come, I just logged into the, it's actually from TikTok store. So I logged into the TikTok store to look at it. I would use a tracking number. Patience is your friend. What gets you caught by scams is that Ippity Dippity Russian. I've been the rock out of Ippity Dippity today. Thank you, Joe, for changing the title. We'll see you again next week. Love you all.